Hello and welcome to the University of Nottingham. One of the words that Christians use and is thrown about in theology is the word sacrament or sacramentality. And for many people, sacrament is almost some sort of box of tricks that you pick up in the local church or that the vicar has in some cupboard. But the concept of sacrament is at the very heart of Christian theology. Indeed, in recent decades, we refer to Christ as the primordial sacrament, Christ the sacrament. With me today is Dr. Simon Oliver. And I want to ask you this word sacrament, what does it really mean? The classic definition that every student learns with sacrament is that it is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual reality. Um, so which they words, claim goes back to St. Augustine. Which yes. goes back to St. Augustine, writing uh, in, in the late 4th century, early 5th century. And, but what this means essentially is that the, a sacrament is a sign. It's something that points uh, beyond itself and it therefore has meaning like any other sign. We, have a, we see a, a road sign. You know, you read it, you relate it to what it points to, and the two things are connected, um, intimately connected. So sacraments in the Christian tradition are typically the signs that we use, the material signs that we use are baptism, first of all, uh, using water, material sign of water, and the Eucharist. So those are the two, two sacraments that every tradition shares, and beyond that, the Roman Catholic tradition defines five further sacraments or signs, which include ordination, marriage, uh, and so on. Um, but the, the key thing about these sacraments is that they, they draw together a whole range of imagery. So baptism is not simply about, for example, uh, reenacting the baptism of Christ in the Gospels. It's about passage through water from slavery to sin, to freedom and new life that we read right through the scriptural tradition, particularly from the saving of the people of Israel, from uh, slavery in Egypt, passing through the Red Sea, through the waters to the promised land, of passing through with Christ through the crucifixion to the new life of the resurrection. So this passage through water is an important part of the symbolic nature of baptism. The Eucharist, the feeding, bread and wine is not simply a reenactment of the Last Supper of Christ with his disciples, but is also knit into the Passover and again God drawing his people, his elect people from Egypt to new life, uh, to the promised land and feeding them on the way. Um, so the, the whole range of imagery knit into these sacraments. So sacrament is not just sign, Sacrament is encounter. It's something that happens now. It's, it's encounter. In, in other words, it affects something. It brings something about. Um, it's not simply um, a ritual enactment of something mm. else that's gone on. It does actually have an objective order to it. There's a, a famous debate. It goes back for centuries in Western Christianity. You know, how many sacraments are mm. there? Two, maybe a bit more, maybe seven. Greek theologians would say the problem is you shouldn't count. Mm. Yeah, and the, the identification of seven sacraments is relatively late, I think, in the tradition. Yeah, 12th century. 12th, late 12th century, century, yeah. So I, I, think the, I think the key thing that one needs to remember about this whole notion of sacraments is that there is a very important sense for the Christian theological tradition that creation is a sacrament or a creation is sacramental in other words everything is there there's a whole system of signs creation is a whole system of signs that points to its creator by the very fact of being a creation you are pointing to something that created it so there is this this whole tradition particularly prominent in saint augustine and people like that that nature is there as a book of signs to be read and interpreted mm -hmm. And this is the reading of the book of nature goes alongside the reading of the book of scripture, that scripture is also a system of signs to be read. And we can read, read the book of nature and the book of scripture alongside each other, using in particular 
what they call the method of allegory. Now, allegory is essentially a, a sacramental way of reading things as signs. These things point beyond themselves. They, they don't just have a literal meaning. They're not just objects. They're there to be interpreted. And so there is an important sense in which the whole of creation is sacramental. But the Christian tradition would say that we only know that creation is sacramental because we have sacraments. So what the sacraments of the church, the particular sacraments of the Eucharist and baptism, and if you want to extend the number, you can, although it's always going to appear a little arbitrary, mm. um, what they're revealing to us is the whole sacramental nature of the whole order of creation. And of course that's based in, in, for Christians in the incarnation, that what we, the ultimate insight into God is looking at the humanity, the human being, Jesus. Yes, exactly. So everything turns on, on Christ as, as it were, the originator of, of all sacramentality. Mm. And th the key there really is to think, well, God becomes incarnate in Christ in a material human historical life. And if that material human historical life can signify the eternal goodness of God, there is in principle no limit to what material reality itself can signify. You know, all bets are off. Mm. Material reality itself can be invested with infinite meaning. This is what Christ reveals to us. So, so Christ in himself being God incarnate, fully God, and yet fully human, can point out that the whole of created reality can, as it were, shimmer with the divine. Um, it, it can shine with the luminance, the luminosity of God. So th this is, but I, I think what, what's absolutely crucial to remember here is that when we talk about sacraments as signs, there is not a separation between the sign and the thing that's signified. So, in other words, the sign is not arbitrary. Uh, it's knit through in its deepest existence with what it signifies. The bread, the body of Christ, the wine, the blood of Christ, the water of baptism, and so on and so forth. That these things are, what, what the sign is and what it signifies are, are utterly intertwined. Mm -hmm. And the difficulty is, in the modern period, is that the sign and the thing signified become uncoupled from each other. So signs start to be arbitrary. You know, you could have th this thing could symbolise it, but you could equally import something yeah. else. And then we ask, then we ask the the ultimate binary question: What does it mean? Yeah. Whereby meaning becomes an arbitrary link between two things. Exactly. Whereas meaning, for someone like say, Saint Augustine, is just absolutely intrinsic to what the sign is. There's a lovely example from the generation after Saint Augustine. Eucarius Bishop of Lyon is one of those people who who. He died around 460, mm. and he's one of those people who've been sort of ignored. But for 600 years, he wrote a textbook for his son, who became the Bishop of Vienne. He was, he was in Lyon, and then further up the, the, the Rhone, his, his son became Bishop. And one gets the impression that he thought his son was not the brightest uh, <laughs> or sharpest tool in the box. So he wrote a, he wrote a short textbook mm. uh, called The Formula for understanding things spiritually, the formula mm. spiritalis intelligentiae, uh, which, he, which he gave to his son. And it's actually a very beautiful thing because at one level, he gives you all the codes for reading the book of the scriptures. Mm. So he says, when you see a tree, it, it should remind you of the tree of, of Eden. It should remind you of the tree of fruitfulness. It should remind you of the tree of the cross. But he also says, you can also go out into the, into, as you walk through the universe and you see a tree, it reminds you that God is ever the giver of life. Mm. And, and also God is bringing things to perfection and that it was within creation that Christ suffered. But there's a lovely point, and I think this is why, I, why I'm dragging in this man, uh, is that when you saw the beauty of something in the creation, it wasn't just a case, oh, that's beautiful, that makes me think beautiful thoughts, that makes me think a sort of mm. uh, little sort of, you know, these horrible little cards with, yeah. with little pious Sentimentality. Sentimentality. When you actually see something beautiful there, 
you're actually getting a glimpse into the beauty of God, which is manifested yeah. in a created way in absolutely. the beautiful thing. Absolutely. Beauty is not simply in the eye of the beholder. It's yes. Not, it's not a subjective thing. Yeah, when you see something beautiful, you are, you are seeing something that is also true and good. Yes. This is, this is absolutely it, it's fundamental. In, it's encountering the yep. very beauty of God. Exactly, exactly. And I mean, g just going forward a few centuries, what, what you describe there in the fifth century of the r is, is the reading of the book of nature and the book of scripture together, both as allegorical, both as symbolic, both as sacramental, but, but within a you know, very sophisticated, what we call hermeneutic, so a science of interpretation. Um, but then in, from the 16th century, the book of nature and the book of scripture become uncoupled from each other. And we have a reduction to purely literal readings. So just uh, the surface meaning of the text, nature not as a system of signs, but just a, a series of objects that might be useful to human beings, but is not invested or doesn't have meaning, intrinsic meaning to it. The only meaning is the, the meaning that we happen to give to it. And, and so our modern imagination is, is very, very different. And at the same time, there's a parallel to that uncoupling in that the sacraments as actual moments of engagement, rituals, become almost, uh, they, they become almost just empty, empty rituals. Yes. And so the, the, the book becomes literal meaning and the sacraments are no longer the shimmering encounter. Yeah, they're just, they're rather ar arbitrary ways of, of registering something that's gone on somewhere else. Um, whereas f for, the, for the deeper tradition, they do affect something, they do bring something about. So, I mean, a good example of this would be to say that if you were faced with a beautiful sunset, there may be one day where you find this particularly inspiring and wonderful. And there may be another day where it just passes you by. It really does depend on how you receive it. Whereas with the sacramental order of the Eucharist and baptism, it doesn't depend on you. What you're receiving is in the sense um, it's objective in that it doesn't depend on your mood or, yeah. or, or your abilities. Uh, it's wholly God's gift to you. And yet you're encountering it. Uh, within the everyday world of life in the same way that one encounters the incarnation. Precisely, precisely. So it then, as it were, cascades out into giving meaning to the whole of, of, of human uh, everyday existence. And this is why we call it, uh, to use a jargon term, a sacramental ontology. It's ontology that what things are, the being of things, is that they are sacramental, they're, they're signs. So is sacramentality somehow the linking element between the theology of the incarnation on the one hand and the theology of the creation on the other? Yes, between Christology and ecclesiology um, and, and the doctrine of creation, that um, Christ is, as it were, the, the originate pivotal sacrament um, who gives us uh, his access to his own life in the baptism and invests us with his own life through the Eucharist um, and therefore indicates that the whole of the created order is itself sacramental. It's pointing us towards the sharing in the divine life. And um, modern uh, Catholic theology has also uh, recovered the notion of, of the church as a kind of sacrament itself, that this is where we, we find this sacramental ontology lived out and made visible. Simon, thank you very much. For the past 500 years, the concept of sacrament has been an area of controversy for Christians, often dividing them and creating problems between them. I hope our discussion has given you a new way of looking at the notion of sacrament, sacramentality and sacraments and has generated for you more light than heat. <laughs>